Hi guys, Crazy Teacher Nick here. So today I'm going to be focusing on paper one, question 1A. Okay, um, this could be a bit of a long uh, a video, so I need you guys to grab a cup of coffee, settle down, and let's get to work. So I'm going to focus very specifically uh, on the 1A section. I will do another video uh, on the 1B section. But a lot of the work that we're going to be doing uh, in uh, the paper one, question 1A, is actually done at the 1A section, before the 1A section actually takes place. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so steps, steps, steps. The, one of the biggest issues we have with, this, uh, with these questions or with the AS level is that we see it as this big amount of writing. We need to break it down into small little bite-sized chunks, okay? Not that I eat elephants, but they say that the best way to eat an elephant is in, you know, is in bite sizes. And that's what we want to do is we want to take this elephant and we want to cut it down. So we want to make sure that we read the question carefully. One of the biggest mistakes I see with students is not reading that question carefully, okay? So there are three sets of skills that we need to focus on or to be effective in this question. Okay, this is the reading paper. Okay, so it's being able to read a piece of text. Okay, then of course there's the writing part of it, and then there's the analysis. Now, for those of you, I'm sure you all did your, your IGCSEs, and if you think back, you might remember your paper two, question one, okay, where you were given two separate texts, and you had to write a, a, your own text. So... That was basically in preparation for this, okay? Also, when it comes to the analysis, you want to keep in mind that horrible writer's effect question that you did at uh, IGCSE level, paper one, question 2D, okay? The skills that you learn from there are definitely going to help you with your skills in analysis. So keep all of these together, okay, in mind. Okay, so question AS level 1A, you're going to have to firstly read the question carefully. Okay, make sure you have a good understanding of exactly what that question is asking because you need to be able to fulfill the task properly. Okay, read the text. Annotate and analyze your text. Okay. It says you need to write between 150 to 200 words. Guys, remember, this is a big focus. This is to help you manage your time. Okay. So you don't want to be writing 600 words. You don't want to be going too far over that 200 words, although you're not penalized if you go over it. Although it's just basically chewing up time that you could be using for the question two of the paper one, which is that big analysis text. Okay, so you still need to tap your question and uh, you got to tap your question twice. Okay, if you know Teacher Rash's videos, you'll know uh, what tapping is. It's text type, audience and purpose. It just helps us zoom in on that question. So here is a, 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 an example. This comes from the Cambridge Assessment Specimen Paper. Okay, so make sure that we read that text carefully okay so the text that we're provided is an advertisement okay we know the advertisement is for a luxury apartment called Pembroke in uh, sunny Cape Town South Africa okay I've, I've been to Cape Town once okay imagine you have recently stayed at the apartment now this is important it is you that has stayed at the apartment, okay? A lot of the time people want to become creative and they've got their family and the, the chickens and the horses and everybody came with them, okay? It's you because, okay, uh, you recently stayed there, so think about how that's going to affect your tenses, okay? So it's also going to affect your tone in terms of it's going to be reflective, Okay, write the text for a review. Okay, good. Of the apartment, so of the luxury apartment, 
which is going to be posted on the Real Deal Holiday Review website. And guys, this is actually very important. Students, skip over this so quickly. Okay? The Real Deal Holiday Review website. So it's going on a website. It's going to affect the structure of your text and the tone of your text because you have an audience. You're not writing this for your teacher. You're not writing this for, um, I don't know, for the, the, the people who make bananas. I like bananas. So keep in mind that it's a holiday review website and you're going to give the real deal. Now, breaking the question down, okay, it's an advertisement. So you know because it's an advertisement, it's probably going to be very persuasive. It's going to use lots of persuasive language techniques. Study your language techniques, your persuasive language techniques. Study your key conventions of an advertisement. Okay. So, <clears throat> it's for a luxury apartment. Keep that in mind. Now, you've recently stayed in this luxury apartment. You are a reviewer. Okay. So... This is what you do for a living. You review because you're going to get paid by the Real Deal Holiday Review website for submitting this review. This is not about your trip for the weekend. You are reviewing it. Now, as much a lot of your information is going to come from the original text. You need to be able to show the examiner that I understand the information in the original text. Okay. And you're going to use that information. So if they talk about uh, how they've got great red chickens, okay, uh, and that is a core focus of the original text, or in this case, it's the luxury. So you want to focus perhaps on the luxury. Okay. But keep in mind, guys, this is only worth 10 marks. Okay. The big money is in the analysis where you're doing the comparative between what you wrote and what uh, the original text was. You're comparing the two on the one hand, on the other hand. That's where the big money is. Focusing on the form, the structure, and the language. Okay, that's question B. We'll do a different video on that because that's another long piece of work. Okay, you are just focusing on writing these 200 words. However, make sure you read the question. Okay, so breaking that question down, the advertisement, what are the key conventions? What structural devices might you find in an advertisement? What language devices might you find in, the, in, a, um, um, in an advertisement? So you want to be thinking about these things. You preempt. You're guessing when you see in the question, it tells you this is the original text. You start thinking about what sorts of things I need to think about. Okay, so under form, the audience for the advertisement is going to affect the register. We know that it's going to be persuasive. So that is its purpose. What are those key conventions? Okay, so think about the perspective of an advertisement. And the reason that these are all important is because it's going to affect what you do in 1B and, more importantly, what you write in 1A. The structure, are there going to be headings or subheadings? What is the pace going to be like? Okay, is there shift in focus? What are the paragraph and sentence structures? So you're already thinking about these things when you're preparing to annotate and analyze the advertisement, the original text. In your language, look for all the different things. Is there rhetorical devices? We know that because it's an advertisement, it's probably going to be persuasive. Rhetorical devices are... Um, uh, language effects that are persuasive. So let's look for those. Lexical fields, let's focus on them. Figurative language, it's going to be descriptive. Okay, it's trying to, the advertisement is trying to grab that reader's attention. 
Okay, there's going to be the use of strong adjectives and adverbs. Keep an eye out for those. Okay, superlatives. The greatest, the most fabulous Pembroke of all the world. Okay, look for implicit and explicit meanings within the text. Okay, so <clears throat> let's have a quick look at the text. Now, I've only cut out a piece here, and in the bottom you can find uh, this whole text, okay? Um, I will uh, attach the text and the mark scheme for you, okay? So, we're going to do one of those five-second things where you're going to pause the video, read through uh, the text here. I want you to think about the form, the structure, and the language, and then we'll go through it ourselves. Uh, so, pause now. Okay, so you've paused, we're back, okay, you've read through the text, you've focused on form, structure, and language, okay, so let's start out by looking at the form, okay, so what is the form of the text? Uh, we can see that the purpose is to persuade uh, the register, the formality of the language, it's semi-formal, okay, remember, you're selling the Pembroke um, uh, luxury apartments, okay? Who is the audience? So the audience is probably going to be professionals or, or wealthy holiday makers because it sounds like it is rather expensive and, you know, a place that a poor teacher like me wouldn't be able to stay at, okay? The perspective is second person and we can see that through the, um, the pronouns that are used, the way that basically, and, and that, is a, that is effective, okay, because it allows the reader to feel part of the text, almost as if the text is traveling with them, okay. And I say professional because holiday apartments, uh, these would normally be like long-stay people that would perhaps be professionals uh, only staying in uh, the town of the Cape, for a short amount of time. I do know the, the, the Cape Grace Hotel, absolutely stunning. Okay, um, what about structures? Okay, now remember guys, you wanna be able to identify at least two or three structural features in the text, okay? And one of the structural features that jumped out at me was this one sentence paragraph. It's both a rhetorical device, okay, and it emphasizes, now listen to the language, it emphasizes the purpose of the text. It persuades the reader that the Pembroke is better than any other luxury accommodation on offering Cape Town. When only the very best will do for your Cape Town trip, why look any further? Okay, structural device. But it's not only a structural device, it's also using a rhetorical device in there. It's also being persuasive. It's got that a rhetorical question. Okay. Um, the slow pace of the text. Okay. So look at some of the language. There's some of the, the language that is kind of like used here. But this is about pace. Pace is a structural device. Within walking distance of a myriad of bistros, gourmet restaurants, popular and, and designer shopping, and an internationally around and renowned aquarium, Pembroke is an oasis to which you can retreat after sampling the city's busy delights. Or retail, I mean, before I forget, I mean, look at the listing. That's, that's very persuasive. Retail food outlets and fine dining establishments are within walking distance. For a special occasion, enlist a private chef for that indulgent gourmet meal. Look at the, 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 the way that they're making it, the, these longer sentences. Okay? And it's reflecting this kind of dreamy, relaxed mood. Okay? It's creating this luxury setting that's indulgent. Okay? Uh, so this is a, a luxury experience. But we're focusing on that as the pace 
which is a structural device. Yes, there are language devices in there as well, but we're going to use it for our structural device. We want two or three. Okay. Let's have a look at some language devices. Oh, we've got plenty. Okay, we've got lots and lots of them. Okay, um, look at the, the rubbing shoulders. Okay, um, it's kind of like one of those phrases, kind of like rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous. Okay, or the repetition of this within walking distance to imply that it's easy to get around. We spoke about that repetition as a language device. Or this, this phrase, perched above, almost making the text seem as if it is, uh, or as if the, 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 these apartments are um, almost looking down upon you know, the others. Okay? Um, and then again, uh, we can take a look at some of that language and that rhetorical question as well. So, and that's not all of them. You guys have seen more, I'm sure. There's plenty to go through. Um, and again, guys, always have a look at the, the mark schemes. Okay, if you have access to them, because they do list tons of other devices that you might want to use. You're not going to be able to use all of them. You're not going to discuss necessarily all of them, but you want to focus on those ones that you see first. So what is our next step? Okay, so we've, we've read the question. We've read the text. We've read the text again. We've annotated the original text, so we know... Our form, the, our form, our structure and language. So now we've got to start kind of getting into the planning section. Okay, and you can't do this without planning. And your planning is going to take up about 10 minutes of your time. Okay, so you need to plan for 1B. You need to know what you are going to be comparing. You don't just write the text and then hope that the text you write is going to compare the effects with the original text. You've got to plan the 1B first. Okay. So that sounds a bit crazy. Planning for 1B before I write the 1A. And everybody asks me, are you crazy? And the answer is simple. Very simple. Yes. But... The planning is vital. We cannot get away from that planning. Okay, so we need to know what we found in our original text so that we can create those effects. Okay, you cannot write 1A if you don't know what you're going to be discussing in 1B. And this is why you're planning for 1B first so that it makes sure when you're writing your 1A, you know that you are meeting the targets of what you're going to be comparing in 1B. Okay. So yes, in very many ways, it's kind of putting the, the cart before the horse, which to be honest, seems like a, a bit of a weird way to do it. So I told you this is going to be a long video. <clears throat> Stay to the end. We're going to look at some uh, student examples. We'll go through those quickly. Okay. So, <clears throat> what are the key conventions of a review? So, we need to know our key facts. We need to show expertise. We need to give an opinion. We need to have comparisons. We need to have, create imagery. Our approach is going to be informal and chatty. Okay, our perspective is probably going to be that first person. Already, these are things that we can compare. Okay, so the form of a review. Now, remember, go back if you have to. Okay, we looked at the form of the advertisement. Now, we need to know what the form of the review is. Its purpose, to advise or to inform or to reflect or to review all of those things. The register is going to be informal, very similar, very similar to the advertisement. So I'm already seeing things here that I need to think about, that I can compare. The register is one, the purpose of the text, the audience. 
Well, we know the one is a holiday apartment for luxury people. The other audience for my review, okay, remember this is the real deal website where I tell you the truth, okay, they will also be holiday makers. They may come from any financial background. So we want to make sure that they do understand that it is luxurious and that it's going to cost a pretty penny. Keep it in mind. Your perspective is going to be first, uh, first person and your overall tone is going to reflect that purpose. Okay. It's going to be that informative. Okay. Advising them because think about why, why do you go and look up a, a review to the latest uh, uh, film? I want to know if it's good enough or the latest video game. I want to know if it's, you know, if I'm paying all that money and it's going to be worth it. Okay. Structure. So remember, you don't get paid unless you have a catchy heading, very similar to an advertisement. Okay. You want to use short sentences and short paragraphs. So what did the original text do? Did they use the same effect? Was it creating the same effects for the audience? Okay. Um, the structure will probably be chronological. Okay. Your arrival, your time there, your overall experience. Okay. Think about the pace. Now, you've only got 150 to 200 words, so your pace might be a little bit quicker. And to be quite frank, if you think about it on a website, the audience, they want to click on quick to be able to review things and then say, yep, I definitely want to stay there. Nope, I don't want to stay there. Okay. Tenses are going to be really important as well. And that's part of that structural effects as well. Language devices, vivid imagery. You want that, create that vivid imagery. Use strong adjectives, okay, and adverbs to describe things. Okay, because you really want to convey the experience. You want them to basically say, okay, you stayed there. What was it like? Was it worth it? What did you like? What did you not like? So you want to convey that experience to them. You're also going to be using superlatives. Okay. Um, the, this was the worst place I've ever stayed at. Uh, the sheets were the roughest I've ever felt. Uh, the floor was the coldest. Okay using adjectives either positively or negatively to reflect the overall experience, metaphors, alliteration, fill your boots, show the examiner, even if you don't discuss them, okay, because you're not going to be able to necessarily discuss everything, okay, but you do want to be able to show the examiner that you are not just a one horse pony, that you are also able to create other effects, even if you don't discuss them, but you've only got like 200 so you got to balance things out really carefully. Okay. Vocabulary. One of the things that we are very, very interested in is how well developed is your vocabulary? Read. Okay. So you could also read the dictionary. Very boring book. No story. Or you could practice like one of those word of the day things. Okay. You can find them. You go ahead, word of the day. And every day you get a new word and you're going to try and use it. I don't know what the word of the day is today. It's still early. Okay, so um, you want to develop your vocabulary. Make sure that you're using good punctuation. And above all, you want to make sure that there is a balance. Okay, never ever get angry or uh, nasty in a piece of text. Okay, even if you're being critical of something, you make sure that your view is balanced. Your tone still remains balanced. Okay. It was rubbish and the place stunk like cheese. Okay. That's not going to work. Okay. So you want to use a very balanced, uh, reflective tone there as well. Okay. So now you get down to writing. Okay. So writing your 1A, you've got between 150, 200 words. That word count is more to manage your time. Okay. Remember, this is only worth 10 marks, guys. It's only worth 10 marks. Your writing must be based on the original text. 
because you need to show that you understand the text. So don't go rogue. Okay, don't go completely off track and writing about how you went to the winelands and then you drove in a car up a mountain. That that's not a review. Okay, your review is very specifically about. It's a it's a holiday review website. You can talk about how you can visit the winelands and they will put on a tour for you. And perhaps what your experience of that was. But again, remember. 150 to 200 words, it's more about the apartment itself. Use as many writing techniques as possible. Post the ones you planned, okay, and any others. So, it's broken down, your marks, what the marks that you're awarded, it's broken down into two sections. You've got the 1A, okay, for 1A. You need to show understanding, and you need to be able to reference features of the original text. So an understanding of the overall text, what the text is trying to do. Okay. And you want to reference key features that are within the text. Okay. Um, and then the other five marks are for your expression and your accuracy. So that's going to be your punctuation, your vocabulary, your spelling. And is your text relevant to the audience and the purpose? So question 1A, those 10 marks, they're made up of 5 and 5. Okay. So 6 out of 10 is basically your average mark. 6 out of 10 is kind of like your average. 8 out of 10 is better. 10 out of 10, hallelujah. That's what you're going to get. Okay, so here's the part that I've been really looking forward to. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that I think were done well and things that were perhaps not done so well. As if I were, well, I am an examiner, but as if I was an examiner for this paper. Okay, these are real life student examples. Pause if you want to read through it. Okay, so, <clears throat> first thing, the title. Okay, I cannot tell you how many times students forget title. It's a review. It is on a website. Okay, it's going to have a title. Try and think of something that may be a little bit more catchy than the true Pembroke. Okay, although, again, it should be at capital for the true, but... It's quite a nice play on words, the truth or the true Pembroke. Okay, so maybe it is, you know, quite interesting, but you want something to grab. It's a website. Okay, people will click on a website three times and then leave. So you want a nice strong title. Now look at the, the way they started. Dazzled from the moment you walk through the door. Love the use of that word dazzled again. Perhaps... Uh, uh, you know, this is going to be a positive review. Okay. Uh, Pembroke is definitely luxury. Through its impressiveness, though its impressiveness isn't quite enough to distract from the fact that it does have flaws. Okay, so again, presenting now, there's a problem here. It's a huge piece of text. Where, where are the paragraphs? I mean, let's be honest, you open up a website and you see a whole lot of stuff like this, you're going to move on. Okay, so paragraph structure is one of the issues the student needs to focus on here. Okay, some of the other things that the student has done quite nicely, okay, they've created that vivid imagery, you're bombarded. A bit negative there, which is kind of what they're saying, that it does have flaws. So it's kind of allowing the audience to uh, now want to see what those flaws possibly are. Okay. Bombarded, wonderful, um, lo, you know, low-frequency word used there. That's good. Um, with colors that don't quite match. Getting the feeling that they're just... Uh, there to try overwhelm you with a sense of luxury. Okay, very, very nice. I like it. Okay, again, creating that visual effect. Um, I'll give them 
that the kitchen appliances, even the glass dining room table, was so spotless and shiny, it was blinding. Again, there's this uh, lexical idea of, of light and brightness. Okay, that might be something that they want to uh, uh, think. Good use of punctuation there. Still, in you know, no paragraphs. Uh, the technologically advanced kitchen. Good, nice use, uh, uh, nice strong word there. Technologically. Okay, advanced. Um, and lighting would leave older people clueless. Okay. And even I had no idea what half the buttons were for. It's a bit, uh, you know, I just there. Whatever. Um, the view, however, is spectacular. Cape Town never disappoints. And I like what the, the, the student has done here. There's a balance. Okay. These are some of the bad things, but there are some good things. And then my overall review. Okay. Um, uh, I event, uh, I, sorry, um, I thoroughly enjoyed lounging on the terrace every evening with a bottle of wine I got from one of the arranged tours. Reflection to the original text. Tick, we're loving that. The king size bed felt more like a king size cloud. Uh, and I got marvelous sleep in fine linens. Again, showing some of the positive sides. It was an overall pleasant experience with service that ups, that's up to par, though I couldn't So I couldn't something recommend. Oh, sorry. I couldn't recommend it to someone who doesn't want to break the bank. Good. Just expressing this or isn't using the boss's credit card. So there we go. Re a reference to audience. Gourmet restaurants and designer shopping are all part of the luxury, but it's definitely luxury that you pay for. Again, very, very nice. I like that. Big problem. No paragraphs. Um, but overall, uh, a good piece of writing. Let's go and have a look at number two. The Luxury Apartment Pembroke. Now, I don't see a title here, so that's immediately going to affect the text because I, you know, I'm going to consider it. Um, tragically falls. Oh, you want us? To, you want me to give you a mark for the previous one? Okay, a, a mark for the previous one. I would basically estimate that at about uh, an eight. An 8 out of 10, maybe even a 9 out of 10. Uh, but structurally, it was missing a couple of things. Okay, uh, let's look at this one. The luxury apartment Pembroke, tragically, lovely uh, adverb there, falls into the category that bigger, fancier, and indeed shinier isn't always necessarily better. Okay, that's good. Okay, nice overview. I like it. As is often the case, uh, with these five-star luxury accommodations, so much potential. So there I'm showing my experience, which is good. Um, uh, so much potential to create an exciting and entirely unique experience was lost because so much time and energy was put into trying to make the apartment as over the top as possible. Again, I quite like the tone here. Um, it seems quite reflective. Uh, and it's kind of uh, the, the, the writer is, is, is almost relating to the audience, in a sense. Uh, every single apartment these days has an extra length, king-sized bed, or surround sound spheres. Okay. Uh, ever heard of over... Kill. Oh, okay, rhetorical question. Perhaps trying to create a bit of humor. We like it. People come to beautiful Cape Town uh, to go traveling sightseeing, not to sit around in some master bedroom and watch movies uh, on their own flat screen. So uh, only eating food made by their own private chef. Uh, the excessive fuss put towards the comfort uh, of the stay takes away from the uh, adventures. Okay, good. Um, with the price of $200 a night, um, you might be getting your worst pay in complimentary breadsticks and mood lighting. Nice bit of humor there. Uh, but so much is lost in 
adventure and experience. Less is more. Something Pendrick, Pembroke should keep in mind. Okay. I would have liked a nice rating there. I rate it 7 out of 10. Um, but student hit that 175 word mark. Good piece of text. I would have liked to have seen the paragraphs a bit more spaced out. But again, I would probably give the student uh, a 7 or an 8 out of 10. Okay. Ooh. Uh, the Pembroke Hotel. I'm assuming maybe that's the title. Uh, it can be summed up in three words. Expensive, luxury, and expensive. Good. A bit of humor there. Quite eye-catching, drawing the reader in. However, is the wallet vaporizing price tag worth the trauma to your credit card? Good. Lots of humor, connection with the audience. <coughs> Welcome to Cape Town, a place positively bursting with things to do. The Pembroke Hotel uh, offers to book excursions for you at an extra cost. And these, along with the hotel, can, hotel costs can really add up. If you're looking for endless, endless excursions, I would suggest considering staying somewhere more budget-friendly. Now, here we're giving advice. Remember, Real Deal website, I quite like it. Moreover, if you're looking for relaxation, then the Pembroke is the place for you. And the first thing I notice is actually now there's a spelling mistake in this uh, double O. Okay, small little thing, just be careful. Picture this, good direct contact with the audience. You finally arrived at the hotel to be greeted by the sleek, pearly white exterior of the mammoth building. You take a deep breath to hopefully soak in some of that excessive richness wafting around, good use of language, vocabulary, and the sickening smell of stagnant sea life suddenly slithers ooh, uh, through your unsuspecting nose. Staying on the brink of the marina seems like a good idea, but now you're not so sure. Once inside, however, you, not your, you are greeted by friendly staff and whisked into a sparkly world of grandeur, where the smell of marina is replaced with essential oils and flowers. Once in your room, the warm hug of the giant fluffy bed traps you inside for days. My little role play aside, there were a few cracks I found in this opulent hotel. Okay, good, giving a nice balance there. While the interior is exper uh, expertly designed, the bidet or toilet seat warmer came as quite an unwelcome surprise. No matter what I tried, um, the dustbin would just not close. Taking into this into consideration, if your company is offering to pay, jump at the opportunity. However, if the blow will go to your personal account, then maybe considering something a little more economical with a normal toilet. Therefore, I would give the hotel 3.5 stars. Check out some of the hotel reviews on realdealholiday.com. Okay, so the student realized right here, okay, that they'd reached 306 words, which was way over. Um, I would basically challenge you guys, have a look again at the text, see what you could cut out. Okay, maybe this, uh, this fourth paragraph was not necessary. Um, remember, time, 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 time. As the student said, I had a little too much fun writing this in the exam situation. Fun is all good and right, okay? But remember that you are in the exam and you've got to manage your time on this. Okay, let's have a look at number four. Uh, Pembroke, what a place, okay? Recently, my husband and I celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary at the Pembroke Hotel. We were looking for a place to spoil ourselves and boy, did the Pembroke do just that. Um, Pembroke is found at the water's edge of the beating heart of Cape Town and situated above the marina, giving rise to the most breathtaking views I couldn't tear my eyes from. Uh, Pembroke has a fully equipped kitchen for the food making lovers, but with Pembroke being walking distance from all the spoils of the city, I didn't have to step foot into that kitchen. Uh, all my house chores were left at home. Pembroke's rooms are expertly decorated. So it's a very different tone here. 
Um, I have been to many hotels in Cape Town, the Cape Grace to name a few, but none have managed to combine colors and top quality items as they have. I felt like an absolute queen sitting on their extra length king beds. Nice for the king and the queen, a nice uh, uh, point there. Uh, Pembroke takes that hassle out of arranging tours uh, out of the picture. They arranged a Wineland tour for us, allowing us to sit back and truly relax. My friends and family were able to share this experience with me as the Pembroke has space to entertain eight people in your bedroom. Um, I would maybe have said lounge, but uh, uh, either way, um, the Pembroke allowed me to make memories. It's got some good points, it's got some bad points, but it doesn't jump out too much at me. Again, probably about a six or a seven, uh, um, you know, at the very, very most here. The previous one would probably be about a nine or a ten, I think. Okay, uh, let's see. Next example. <clears throat> Last week, I stayed at the renowned Pembroke Luxury Apartments. The apartments are situated in the middle of Cape Town's popular waterfront, surrounded on all sides by famous luxury hotels. We've reviewed in previous articles, links attached below. Very, very nice proof that we've, uh, it's a website, gives you that nice feeling. Also gives you this idea that, uh, uh, you know, they have experience. Beyond the strip of hotels, there lies a myriad of exquisite restaurants. Uh, I think myriad is from the original text, but I can't remember now, but it's a good use of words here. Vocabulary is good. Nice punctuation, use of that semicolon there. There's a reason this waterfront is one of the most popular holiday destinations in Southern Africa. However, good, again, finding that balance. All in all, I was disappointed. After reading all the extensive ads published around the internet for the Pembroke, I naturally expected something out of this world. While it's true that the options for entertainment outside of the apartments are exquisite, again, nice language, good structure of sentences, the apartments themselves fall short of the exuberant advertising. Okay, again, uh, you know, giving that advice, I found the room service was slow and ineffective. I planned to enjoy a drink on the balcony overlooking the waterfront, but it took some 45 minutes to arrive, and once it did, the ice had melted. More than that, I found it difficult to sleep given the sound of construction going on next door. Okay, good. To create a more realistic expectation in our readers, let me tell you that while the apartments are lovely, they are certainly not perfect. Again, I would have liked a little bit of rating, three out of five. I don't know if the, the, this personal uh, discussion about how the ice melted, but again, it might be uh, an effect I might want to discuss. And that is something that we'll discuss in the next video that I get to do. Um, basically, how I now take the original text and this text and I start writing my comparative. Okay. Remember, in the 1A, you focused on about 200 uh, words. In the 1B, we're looking for about 300 to 400 words, roughly. 350. Okay. It's always a good thing. Okay. If you like this video, Please, guys, don't forget to click the little like button.